vocabulary. Uh, look at all these words. And I have a quick question to start with. Um, what do you think are the most common words in English? Here are the top 10 words. There you go. Did you um, did you get did you guess these? Uh, just a note about this top ten. The top ten is slightly different depending on what kind of English we're talking about. So, for example, spoken English and fiction and non-fiction, academic writing, conversation and scripted speeches and unscripted speeches are, are different. So um, I'm now talking, this is an unscripted speech. So I'm talking mostly from memory. Um, if I was to have a conversation, I'd be using different words. If you notice conversation, I and you are very common words. Um, in academic writing, we don't use I and you at all. Um, in fiction, I is used, we also use he and she. So the different, the slight differences between these different kinds of situations when we're using English, but basically it's a very similar collection of words. They're all um, very short words. And next question, um, what percentage of English is written with these words? What do you think? If I was to take all the books in the library, a pair of scissors, cut out each word, and make little piles, which would be the, which would, these 10 words would make up, what percent do you think? Um, it's in fact, it's some um, 25%. So this is, um, I guess, good news. If you know these 10 words, you know 25% of everything that has been written in English. That's the good news. Um, maybe less good news. Um, well, here's a question. Um, what are these words in Japanese? What is the in Japanese? Um, I don't think there is a word for the in Japanese. And in fact, if we look through this list, most of these words do not have a direct word in Japanese. Even um, I is a fairly simple word. But in Japanese, there are many different ways to say I. Um, watashi, if you look in a dictionary, but most people don't say watashi. People say ore, boku, uh, sensei wa, if I'm the teacher. Um, some people use their names. So there, there are many different ways to say I in Japanese. So even, even a word like I doesn't have a, um, doesn't have a simple translation. Let's look at the word to. What does to mean? Um, I'm about to go to Tokyo to attend to some business. Uh, if we look at to in this sentence, um, we can see different uses about to, uh, to a place, uh, to plus infinitive, um, to walk, to dance, to go. And to attend to, attend to is a different meaning to attend. Uh, so we can see that to is, it's very difficult to say what the word to means, but we can say it's a very useful word. Um, and we can look at these words then, if we look at the top 10 words, um, we can see how often these words are used uh, by their size. This is from a website called uh, Word Count, which shows you how how many, how much words in English are used. Um, another way to look at the words in English is in a, we can kind of plot them on a graph like this. So if we go along um, from left to right, this is how many words you know. Um, a thousand words, two thousand words, three thousand words. As we saw, if you know ten words, and if you go up, this is how much you can read. So if you know ten words, you've got about 25%. 100 words, you're up to 50%. Um, and a 1,000 words is up to something like 75%. So if you know a 1,000 words in English, 
then you can read 75% of everything that's been written in English. Uh, this is very, very good news. Um, again, the less good news is that this, this graph goes along quite a long way. You need about six or 7,000 to get to 90%, and there are a lot of words in English. So this chart goes a, a very long way over that way. So, um, just to, to uh, digress to um, junior high school, this is, a, um, this is a junior high school textbook. Now, junior high school first year is when many students in Japan start studying English. Uh, there's one word on this page um, that is, is a bit strange um, for some students who've been learning English for a few weeks or a few months. Um, and the strange word um, is grandchild. And if we look on word count, grandchild is the 27,644th most common word in English. Um, this means that there are 27,643 words which are more useful or more commonly heard. Um, so I'm not sure why this word is in, in a textbook. Well, I guess I, I, I guess it's a, um, well, for one thing, we wouldn't, we usually don't say grandchild. We'd usually say grandson, if it's a boy, granddaughter, if it's a girl, usually. Uh, if we're talking about more than one, we talk about grandchildren. So those words are much more common. And I guess the word um, grandchild is, grand is used for grandfather, grandmother, and child is a fairly common word. So the parts of this are a bit more common. Um, um, but it's, it's not a word that would, it's probably not a word that would be used very often on its own. So it's, it's interesting to see this in a first year textbook. Um, and interesting to think what happens then with, um, with textbooks in general. When textbooks are made, um, two things often happen. One of them is that if it's a textbook in Japan, um, people start with Japanese and then translate into English. So sometimes this comes out with um, unusual English or sometimes unnatural English. Another thing that happens is there's a, um, a vocabulary list that somewhere in the Ministry of Education, somebody has decided which words students need to learn. And you can learn about a thousand words in a year. Um, that's not, that's possible. Um, and so what someone has probably thought is that you can learn the first thousand words first year junior high school, second thousand words second year junior high school, next thousand third year junior high, then the first year of high school, second year of high school, third year of high school. So third year of high school you're up to about six thousand words. Um, and this sounds great, but unfortunately what happens when people are making textbooks for high schools is that they need to, they need to add these words that are between 5,000 and 6,000. Now, we saw that the first thousand words make up about 75% of English. The sixth thousand words make up less than 1%. So these words are quite a small a small section of the English language. And to find these words, to get texts with these words in, what you need to do is find, start off with actually quite a difficult text that has lots of this, this vocabulary, this language that we don't use very often. So you need to start with a difficult text. And then because textbooks are quite quite short, you need to take out all the easy words. Um, what this means is that high school textbooks in Japan are very, very difficult to read because they've started with a difficult text and then taken the easy words out. Um, so in fact, they're di more difficult than many, that many academic journals or many things that university students in other countries, English speaking countries will read. Um, so, um, this is possibly a problem, 
Um, and the other problem is, of course, that if you're studying all these difficult words here, some of the first thousand words you may not have seen since those first year junior high school textbooks six years ago. Uh, and, and as I've said, these words, the first thousand words are very, very important. Um, so when you're reading, as you're reading, um, as you're reading these books, um, there are three very important ideas that you need to know about. Um, these are head words, word count, and coverage. Now, um, word count is the total number of words in your book. Um, and head words is the number of different words. And I'll just give you an example of um, head words. This is from um, a book by Oxford University Press. And uh, this is the passage from the book. This is 53 words long. So if we're counting words, there are 53. But as you can see from this, there are several words that are repeated. So, of course, in English, we use the words, we use words again and again. Um, and in fact, there are only 34 different words in this text. So there are 53 words, the word count, but there are 34 words, the number of head words. Um, so... Uh, my question then is, how many words do you need to know? So if you're reading in English, um, as you know, uh, if you come to a word you don't know, you should ignore it, skip it, and keep reading. Um, but how many, how many words can you do that to? So how many words can you ignore and skip and still follow the story, still enjoy reading? What do you think? Think of a think of a percentage. Uh, or another way to think about this is if you've got a page, there's a page in your book, and if the page has a hundred words on it, there's probably about a hundred words on here. Um, how many of these words do you need to know to be able to read the page and get through the story? Um, have a think, then come back, and um, let's see what see what uh, we, I'm going to do an experiment and try and find the answer.